was eight months old by Christmas of 1861. The battles raging far from our home in Concord, Massachusetts, seemed very close to us, for father had joined the fight for the Union in September. Too old for combat, he had enlisted in the army as a chaplain, further reducing our already diminished means. But Christmas, with all its joys, did nothing to make our return to the workaday world any more palatable the next morning. Beth, where on earth did you put those postage stamps? Um, somewhere. I forget, Mommy. Which one do I square to get the circumference, the diameter or the radius? Help me, somebody. Amy was the only one still in school. Meg, the oldest, worked as a nursery governess for a pittance. Hey, scoot up, Amy, so I can look. Beth, gentle and sweet-tempered, never minded the storms the rest of us created. Hasn't anybody seen my blue heroine? As for myself, as usual, I was up in my garret, putting off as long as possible my daily chore as reluctant companion to Great Aunt March, for which I was paid even less than Meg. My corner in the attic was sanctuary to me, my castle in Spain, and more importantly, a training ground for what I wanted most to be, a good writer. <sighs> Hager the witch had turned the wine to poison. All unknowingly, Hugo lifted the goblet to his lips and drank deeply. Beth, you have to feed that animal in the living room. Oh, well, she likes the company, don't you, baby? Oh, I'll never understand geometry if I live a thousand years. And I'll never finish this letter to your father unless you all hush. Oh, bother the ribbon. Those awful children don't care what I look like anyway. Joe! Where are my overshoes? Hmm. I think I'll call you Diana. Well, at least you and Joe still have a party to go to. All I have is hard old school. Mine. Why can't I stay home like Beth? Then I could draw and paint. I was right in the middle of my most important scene. I can't find my overshoes. Oh, is she? Amy's never on time. Miss March? Miss March? Joe, how are your manners? We pass him every single morning, Meg. We haven't been properly introduced. Introduced to him either, but he's lived across from us for months now, and well, he looks a capital fellow, Meg. Full of larks, I'm sure. Ladies, do not throw snowballs. Who wants to be a lady? Christopher Columbus, I don't. Oh, well, thank goodness there's Amy. It's more than my life is worth sometimes to get those girls off in the morning. Poor Amy, I think she hates school even more than I did. Having to stand up and recite in front of everybody. Hardly seems fair to Amy when you let me drop out early. That was different, all those colds you used to catch. Besides, now I have all the time I want with my piano. I 
I wish we could afford to buy you a new one. Oh, no, Marmy. This one's good enough. Truly it is. Well, I guess it's time to help Hannah with the dishes. And then you can run this down to the post office for me. All right. I'm sorry, Grandfather. I was, I was just waiting for John. Mr. Brooke, you said I could play in my spare time. This is not your spare time. And Mr. Brooke was waiting for you in the schoolroom. It's all right, Mr. Lawrence. It hasn't been that long. I'll be upstairs. I know you like music, so why do you get so angry? You, you listen to that, that girl across the road there play. I saw you in the window last summer listening to her. That's different. And it has nothing to do with you. She plays like your mother. And I play like my father. Your tutor's waiting. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, uh... There was an invitation to a party, some people by the name of Gardner. I accept it for you. Instead of wasting your time between lessons with that piano, you should be out with youngsters your age. I know you're lonely. You need friends. I want you to be happy, my boy. Believe it or not. Tonight, Joe. Useless question. Our old poplin, since we have nothing else. At least you have gloves. Mine are ruined from spilled tea. But you have to have gloves. Without, you'll be comey, you'll foe. <laughs> I'll be what? Faux pas, what you mean, and you're right. Joe, we can't go without gloves. Why don't you take care? Oh, it's dead for being poor. Oh, Meg. I expect it is harder for Meg. She can remember better than any of us how it was in the olden days before Papa lost his money. Now, don't you start criticizing Papa. I wasn't. Yes, you were, and I hear enough of it from Aunt March. I know. You can both wear one of Meg's good ones and carry one of Joe's spoiled ones. Gloves, I mean. That way, everybody will think you're both perfect. That's using your noodle, Amy. Come on, we're going to be later than ever. Oh, almost forgot. To go beard that old dragon in her den again. Josephine! Goodness, child, you do like to dawdle. I'm sorry, Aunt March. But couldn't we read something else today? We've been through all these essays. Anything worth reading is worth reading twice. What's the news of your father? Herring off to the army like some young spriggins. No good will come of it, you mark my words. Jonathan March always was a fool, already in reduced means, and off he goes, any old how. And March. He's been a hapless gull and a fool for any silly cause all his life long. You stop it, you stop it, Aunt March. He's my father, and, and anyhow, the war to save the Union is not a silly cause. Don't you use that tone to me, Josephine. Now sit down. Start reading, please. Of studies by Sir Francis Bacon. Studies serve for delight, for ornament and for ability. Their chief use... Good morning, Miss March. You're Mr. Lawrence from across the road. And you're the one called Beth, aren't you? Our resident musician. Oh, I heard you playing all last summer through open windows. I didn't disturb you. Our piano's a poor one. I wouldn't want to be a bother. No, 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 my child. Quite the opposite. I was saddened when I had to close the windows against the autumn chill. 
Uh, well, good day, Mr. Lawrence. Beth. My dear, forgive an old man for being blunt. But as one grows older, time is too precious to waste on manners. You do so remind me of another young lady. Your piano is sadly out of tune, and I have a fine instrument in excellent condition. Would you do me the honor of putting it to good use? But that boy lives with you. That's true, of course, but uh, he's uh, very busy at his lessons. I'm usually busy in my study, so there's no need for you to see anyone at all. Come and go as you please and play to your heart's content. Why, well, he plays also, doesn't he? I mean, son travels both ways through windows, and I heard him or I thought it was, was him. I, I mean, I, I wasn't complaining, truly. History makes men wise. Mathematics, subtle. Poetry makes men... And what is that, may I ask? If you find it so much more enticing than the educational excellence we were enjoying together, then share it with me, Josephine, by all means. Oh. Yes, Aunt March. D'Artagnan sprang up with a bound at the same instant that the ball from the other musket had torn up the stones where he had thrown himself. Josephine! Well-bred ladies do not waste their time reading novels. Oh, but it's... it's very stirring, Aunt March, and, and tragical. Listen, if there should be a third shot, said he, I am a lost man. D'Artagnan was not one of those uselessly brave men. Four o'clock. Time for me to go, Aunt March. Remember, you said that I could leave early today because of the party. Remember? Of course I remember. You are the most provoking girl, really. Josephine, you may leave that novel here. Concord, Massachusetts in 1861 boasted many beautiful houses, and the Gardner's was one of the grandest. Sally Gardner and my sister had grown up together and were good friends. Meg and I accepted few invitations, but Sally's Christmas party was special and always seemed a great occasion. But when we arrived and I looked around, I knew Amy had said it rightly. Being poor was harder for Meg. Pretty girls deserve pretty new things. As for myself, no matter what I wore, I just stayed the same old me. Matt, this stupid dress is so tight I can hardly breathe. Joe, you scorched the back of your skirt. Where? Well, don't be so obvious. I knew I shouldn't have ironed it myself. Meg, come and see the bracelet I got for Christmas. Uh, stay against a wall, and for heaven's sakes, don't dance. Nobody ever asked me anyway. Meg? Where is Meg March? Oh, there you are. Guess what? Ned Moffat's just arrived asking especially for you. Oh, now let's see you. You must look your very best tonight of all nights. Oh, Meg, we really must do something about that dress. Well, girls, they're wearing the same dress as they wore last year. They have so little money, you know. I 
nice. They know we're just oh, bringing oh, look them nice. down on your shoulders. Oh, uh, turn around. Let's see what we can do with the front. Oh, my oh, knees. Oh, oh Sally, do I dare? <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather made me come here tonight, and I don't even know anybody. Well, mine's just the opposite reason. We know almost everyone, but I have a scorch on the back of my dress, and Meg doesn't want them to see or talk about... Oh, oh, dear. I wish she'd have my head for blurting it all out. I hoped you'd be as plain as you look. Honest girls are very rare, you know. Most of them are too much fuss and feathers, and I wouldn't even be here, except... A except for your grandfather. I try to do what he wants. But when I'm of age, I intend to go my own way, not his. And so you shall, since you're a boy. Do you like to play cricket? Mm -hmm. Oh, capital. We have a bat. But come spring, you and I and, and my sisters, why, we'll have us a game. I'm very good for a girl. <laughs> Amy complains I spend too much time at it, and perhaps I do, but how else am I to learn? I have one last story to complete, and then I'm going to send a lot to a publisher. My first try. Joe, isn't that your sister? Excuse me, please. Don't you? Please don't scold. Is that champagne, Meg? And look at you. You're the one always talking about being proper. I am proper, Joe. You, you just look and you'll see. For, for once, I look like everybody else. And I'm not shabby and, and dowdy and poor. Just this one night, I want to be what I'd like to be. The prettiest butterfly in the garden. That's what Ned Moffat called me. And I am. Joe? She's happy, Joe. Oh, yes. 
please. Oh. oh, so nice of you. Thank you. I suppose she is. Will you dance? I will if you will. Oh, the scorch. Oh, come on. We'll go where no one can notice. Come on. Champagne. You'll see. Tomorrow you'll feel even worse. Come on, May. Come sit down. Mommy's not going to send for us for hours. And someone said it's sleeting outside. I can't walk home, Joe. Oh, I can't stay. I just can't. Oh, Meg. I will get a cab and I'll take you home. Um, I, I can fetch your things. Oh, best take those idiotic shoes up with me. I made such a fool of myself. Ah! I tried to pretend, Joe. I'm no butterfly. I'm just Meg March. And that's good enough for anybody. for the day. Thank you. Uh, now I'm getting it. Take care of you, Doctor. Oh, I will. And, uh, Miss March, uh, how is, uh, are all of your family? Oh, very well, thank you, Mr. Brook. Good. And, uh, Miss, uh, uh your sisters? Uh, fine. Really. Good day, then. I sure am glad you came. I had my fill of lessons. Come on. Oh. You certainly don't need these. What are they? Blancmange from Meg. She says it's her fault you caught cold the other night, and it's for your sore throat. If you have one. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's bad, but... Oh, look, a little kitten. From Beth. Just a loner, mind you, oh, to cheer you up. Face. Hello. And this is to cheer her up. Come on. Her name is Diana. Well, you certainly have a marvelous house to live in. Bless you. Oh, seems like a prison to me sometimes. 
Nothing but lessons and lessons and more lessons and nobody to talk to but Brooke and Grandfather. Oh, never mind. You have friends now. Us? If you can abide girls. Girls are all right. You are anyway. Hey, how would you like to go and see that play, The Seven Castles? It, it's still going to be on next week and I'll be over my cold. Yes. Oh, but Meg will have to come too or Mommy will let me go. Sure. <laughs> How's her ankle? Oh, fine. Or anyhow, almost. We've heard you play. You're awfully good. I'd be a lot better at it if Grandfather... What, Laurie? He doesn't want me to play at all. Why? Well, you see, my father was a concert artist in Italy. And my mother... Well, Grandfather didn't want her to marry him, but she did, and... and they were on tour in Europe, and there was an accident, and they were both killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Grandfather... I... I guess he's always blamed my father for it. So he doesn't want me to be like him at all, but especially not with music. Sometimes I think he would like to pretend he didn't exist at all. But my, my real name is Senna, Theodore Lawrence Senna. My grandfather won't even leave me that. Perhaps he thinks he's doing what's best for you. Wanting you to be all American. His chin is very stern. And those brows. Oh, if he should frown. Still, his eyes are kind. Bethy was a fraidy cat. I'd like him, I'm sure of it. Thank you, ma'am. And I'll try my best never to frown at you. I do truly regret that I frightened your young sister. As I told her, I only hoped she'd put this piano to good use. Sir, you should let your grandson do that. He's told you of my objections, has he? He wants very much to play, you know. What the boy wants and what he needs are more friends like you, my dear. Tell shy young Beth for me that she's welcome here. Will you do that? I will, sir. If you will think about what I have said. Since Aunt March had discovered that some ladies, herself included, can while away the hours most happily with D'Artagnan and the Three Musketeers, my days were much less worrisome. What seemed even more wonderful to me, I had the ending to the last story in my book, and I liked it. Well, it's going to be a memorable day. Amy's on time. Bye, Mommy. <laughs> Have a good day, girls. Bye. Bad news, Marmy? Missouri's up in arms wanting to join the Confederacy. Poor Mr. Lincoln. The war just doesn't go well. You know, Marmy, I was thinking. I know I needed these for Papa, but Joe did say Mr. Lawrence really wants me to play his piano, and I thought if I gave these to him, it wouldn't be so much like taking favors. And I start another pair for Papa right away. I'm sure Mr. Lawrence would be very pleased, Beth. Mr. Lawrence says you may come and play any time. We've given up expecting you. doing lesson time. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my dear child, I didn't know it was you. I thought it was Laurie. I didn't want to bother you. 
I promise I'll never come again. Yeah, please, please, no, don't. That same day, I was polishing my latest work of fiction, unaware that Marmee and Amy were involved in a real-life drama. All I did was to decorate the borders of my slate, and Mr. Davis took a ruler to my hands, and he wouldn't stop, Marmee. And then he made me stand alone with the whole glass for hours. I'll <laughs> show him about punishment. angry with you, you know. I shouldn't feel this much anger with anyone, especially since Mr. Davis had some cause, but to be so harsh. Your father would be very disappointed in us. Well, I think it was horribly unfair, and I'm never going back to school, never. I wish your papa was here. It's so hard to know what to do. Very well. You needn't. But don't you think yourself in the right, Miss Amy? Even though I know your father doesn't hold with physical punishment, not in this modern day, and certainly not for such a, a small crime. Now, I won't have to do anything but pursue my art. <laughs> You'll help with the housework, young lady. And do your lessons with me. Joe! I don't have to go back to school, not ever. Joe, isn't it wonderful? I can come up here with you, and I'll draw, and you'll write, and we'll have ourselves a real artist studio. Won't it be fun? The only thing we need is we got to get more heat in here. We're going to do no such thing, Amy March. This is my garret, mine. So you can take your art and go somewhere else. Look what you made me do. The paint is ruined. Joe, Joe, what dress are you going to wear tonight? Um, any old thing. What difference? It's just Lori. Will you both please leave me alone? We don't get a chance to go out very often. Where are you going with Lori? Never mind. Little girls shouldn't ask questions. I'm not a little girl. He's taking us to see the Seven Castles. He is? I want to go, too. Amy, you weren't invited. Well, Lori wouldn't care. And Marmy said last week I could go if anybody'd take me. Well, we're not going to. Go find yourself somebody else. You mean old thing? I've had an awful, awful day. You just asked Marmy if I haven't. And you should be kind to me. Amy, would you please leave? You mean and I hate you. And I'll get you for it, too. You just wait and see if I don't. Amy has had an awful day, Joe. Marmy told me. I don't care. I'm trying to finish my story, and... And the sign on that door does say, keep out. Joe March, sometimes your temper's just... Well, it's shameful, that's all.
Beth, uh, the slippers suit me perfectly. I like to pay my debts, so I hope you will accept from me in return something which belonged to the little daughter I lost, a girl very much like you, your humble servant, James Lawrence. Oh, oh I, I, but I must, I must go thank him. <laughs> Marmy, have you seen my book? It never leaves my desk, but I've looked for it all. Amy? Amy March, what did you do with it? You did it last night while we were at the play, didn't you? Joe. Oh, Marmy, she must have. Look at her face. And she said she'd get me yesterday. Amy, how could you? Oh! Oh, you wicked, wicked girl! I can never write them Josephine, again! Josephine, stop that word! Stop it! I'll never forgive her, Marmy. Never. Joe, dear. Amy didn't really understand how important it was to you. And now that she does, she's truly sorry for what she did. And you, Joe, must forgive her. She is your sister. I think there must be nothing worse than a quick temper. I'm afraid you inherited yours from me. Mine was ungovernable for years until your father tried to help me. And I'm still not cured. I wanted to strike that schoolmaster yesterday when I saw Amy's hands. But I thought of your father. I miss him, Joe. And I'd like so much to try to help you learn what he tried to teach me. Clinging to your anger. Refusing to forgive. Will cost you a much higher price than even the loss of your book. Talk to me, Joe. You haven't even looked at me since... Well, not in days, Joe. You said next time you went skating, I could go with you. Oh, 
please, Joe. Amy, I think she's meeting Lori down at the river. He always puts her in a good mood. Why don't you go after her? If you try her at just the right minute, she'll forgive you, Amy. I know she will. All right, I've checked the ice. Now, it's mostly fine, but there's a soft spot over here. So, if you'd keep close to this corner, you'd be safe. Be careful. She's going to be all right. She may not even take cold. You got her home so quickly. Lori did everything. All I did was to let her go without a word. If she died, it'd be my fault. Oh. <laughs> Joe. Oh, you warned me, Marmy. You said I'd pay a price. I'm the wicked one I am. But never, never again will I ever let my temper run away from me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But Marmy knew, even if I didn't, that cruel though it was, this one lesson would not be enough for a temper like mine. I would discover so myself in time to come, the hard way. More than two years had passed since Amy fell through the ice because of me. Papa was still a chaplain in the Union Army, and we were all beginning to fear that the war against the South would never end. But in March of 1864, President Lincoln had appointed Ulysses S. Grant General-in-Chief of the Armies, and the North took new hope. After Amy burned my book, it was some time before I found hard to put pen to paper. But once again, my stories were complete. I liked them, and so did everyone else at home. But what a publisher. Yourself. What if someone saw? Besides me, I mean. Christopher Columbus. What do I care? Anyhow, it's quicker. Where are you sneaking off to? To town, on errands. And I'm not sneaking. And that old thing suits me. Well, that's true. But that's not a compliment to either you or it. First Meg, now you. Quit badgering me, Amy. Really, you were much nicer when you were little. Oh. I can remember times when you said otherwise. You aren't going to town, too, are you? Down to the pond to sketch. You think on your nose. Take my name. 
that shot from the ninja. Sore tooth. Mm-hmm. All rolled up and tied with a ribbon. How did you... You were spying on me. From in here, oh, Lord. Now, Joe, Joe, now what did the newspaper say? It, it was easy. I was scared to death, but when I... They liked it. No, 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 they haven't even read them yet. I mean, I won't know what they think until one's published. Or they all come back to me in the post. Well, at least you've tried, Joe. <laughs> I did, I you tried! You did it. You finally oh. did it. Of course, they won't pay me. I'm so glad you know. I'd have utterly died if I couldn't share with somebody. You see, something good comes from playing hooky every time. Theodore? Is this what you do in your valuable school time? Frequent pool halls? No, sir. I mean, no, not always. I was... It should be never, young man. Grandfather, you've seen my marks. I'm doing well enough in school, and if I choose to cut class, well, that's up to me. It is not. I will not pay out my good money for you to waste your time. Your good money be hanged. It's college that's wasting my time. When are you going to read You listen to me, you young no, whippers. No, never. I am not your little boy anymore. And I am sick of you using your money to tell me what to do. With... Yeah, hey, look after him, Joe. I can't. I'm... I'll just make things worse if I stay. He didn't mean it, sir. Truly, he didn't. Perhaps not. But the words were the same, you see. I shouldn't have struck him, but the words were the same. His mother said them to me. She said I was using my money against her when I tried to prevent her marrying that Italian. And so I stopped trying. Died in Europe before I ever saw her again. I'm afraid I'm losing that wonderful boy as I lost his mother. No, sir. He is due to come of age in less than a year. If only he could have his music along with his other studies. He'll have a fortune to manage. After I'm gone, he must learn about serious matters. Then he can have his music. The whole world if he wants. I've promised him. Europe and Euro too, but I will not have my grandson be a wastrel his life long. Lori could never be a wastrel. He's too fine. You're a good friend to Lori, Joe, and I hope to me too. Lori's picnic the next day was partly in honor of Frank Vaughn, visiting from England. 
Bethy was the only one of us marches who didn't join in the festivities. She suffered such bouts of shyness with groups of people, especially where there were strangers, that she begged off, saying Marmy needed her at home. As it turned out, Marmy did, most painfully. But we were not to know that until later in the day. Your turn next, Mr. Brooke. Lieutenant. I think I'll drop out, thanks. Too much competition? You don't like croquet, Miss March? Oh, well enough, Lieutenant. Uh, it's just that if we were all to play, we wouldn't be through in time for lunch. <laughs> May I sit? Oh, yes, please. You haven't made it up with him, have you? Stony cold silence at dinner and breakfast. Laurie, you should apologize. I should have. He's the one. Joe, I don't need your advice. It's none of your business anyway. I don't, I don't know, Joe. I, I just don't know if I can stick it anymore. I, sure, I owe him everything, and I do love him. He can be so kind. <laughs> when he isn't furious. Laurie, he's afraid of losing you. He told me so yesterday. Well, he's making a job of it, I'll tell you. Sometimes, sometimes, it wouldn't take a brass farthing for me to sign on the next schooner leaving from Boston for anywhere. I wouldn't need that brass farthing either. If I were a man, I'd go with you like a shot. I want to experience something besides the dumb old things I'm supposed to do. Be a lady and stitch samplers. Lori, please. You're the only thing your grandfather has. All right. That's 15 jackets, and I already put in 15 pairs of trousers. At least this winter our soldiers won't freeze. And by that time, maybe the war will be over. Why on earth I ever agreed to do this here at home, I'll never know. I swear if one more do-gooder comes to the door, I'll slam it in her face. <laughs> Hannah, did you stop for the mail? Yes. No letter again? He's never gone this long without writing. Shot, Amy. The faithful lover. Not even the war could change that. He's still making cow eyes at Meg. Ever since he first saw her, you never noticed? Oh, Meg could do much worse, Joe. Any girl could. John's a fine man. He's talking about being an accountant after he's mustered out. Grandfather wants to hire him himself. Meg isn't ready. For better or worse, thank you. Is that your opinion or hers? You'll be chasing after it one of these days yourself, home and hearth. I that. will not. All I want to do is write. Become a famous author and travel to Europe, even Africa, maybe. And end up like Aunt March, a lonely old spinster. Aunt March was never famous for anything, except for ever being irritable. Go ahead, Amy. It's your turn. I haven't won a game of croquet in ever so long. You, you kicked my ball. Oh. You cheated. Is that how you English conquered the world, by cheating? Well, if that's the only way to win, and as you can see, I have, I've won your attention, Miss Amy. You know, you really are much too pretty to be wasting it all on a game. Oh. All right, now it's your turn to win. And I know you'd like Keats's poetry as much as I do, Meg. I have a volume I could lend you if, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. What was it you... It's not important. Oh, but it is. Does your arm still hurt you very much? Oh, no. Doctor says I was very lucky. The bullet went straight through. In fact, I'm healing so well, the army wants me back. Oh. Not for fighting. 
It's just office work, unfortunately. Washington in summer is pretty miserable. Yes. Meg, will you think of me? Yes, of course. Meg. Washington tomorrow, early. Come home, please. Oh, Joe Mouse. I'll come over as soon as I can. I'll bring your things. We hardly have enough money for the train ticket, much less a Washington hotel for Marmy. She sent Hannah to Aunt March asking. Thank goodness for Hannah. Even if she does say yes, Aunt March is bound to lecture first, and I just get mad. Grandfather, word has come from, word has come that Reverend March is very ill down in Washington. I see. The poor woman will want to be with him. She will need money. She'll need it, sir, but she won't take it, not from outside the family. It's presumptuous of me, no doubt, but I had hoped, Theodore, when I first saw you, you'd come to make amends. I'm told that you're no longer a boy, but you certainly acted like one yesterday. It, it, it's hard for me to realize sometimes. I don't mean... Perhaps an apology is due from both of us. You know, I'm very proud of you. Most of the time. Are you, sir? Of course, my boy. Oh. <laughs> Grandfather, I suppose if you can stick it, I can. I'm not all that good at billiards anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Grandfather, you know, I've been thinking, Mrs. March is going to need an escort to Washington, and I'd like to go with her. No need, Laurie. I can go much more conveniently, and besides, I... Uh, it's my fondest hope to be of help to that family. I'll need your assistance, though, Mr. Lawrence, to settle up some affairs. Lormy, what do you want? Oh, just set it at the top of the stairs, girls. Father's best robe. He'll want it in the hospital. Especially when he's recuperated. Oh, he'll be fine just as soon as he sees you, Marmy. You know he will. And I think these are enough, don't you? All sponge and press, Marmy. Yeah, this should be fine for the train, yes? Oh, my stars, all that dreadful foo for our downstairs, the clothes for the soldiers, and oh, so many things I haven't thought of. Uh, uh, I'm half bewildered. I have been going to the Hummels every day, you know. There isn't a child in that house that's not down with a grip. We'll take care of everything, Marmy. Yeah. Oh, my dear girls. Gracious. Mrs. March will be upstairs packing. I don't doubt I'll call her. She's coming. Sit. 
that march. You were kind to come so quickly. Girls, girls. I thought it necessary, Margaret, since you seem to be not in your right senses. What can you be thinking of, rushing off to Washington in such a fashion? All harem scarum with no escort in these times. Aunt March. Oh, I told that foolish nephew of mine that no good would come of his enlistment. Well, maybe next time you'll be wise enough to listen to my advice. Aunt March, I must go to him. I must. And I'll be perfectly all right on the train. Idiocy. Nowadays, one can never be sure who one's traveling companions are. I leave for Washington at first light, with your approval and help, or without it. Well, I, I doubt you'll need the hundred dollars you requested. In all probability, you'll arrive in Washington only to have to turn around and accompany March back in his coffin. He never did have stamina. Furthermore, if you were at all rational and oh. weird, that girl has the unfortunate habit of jumping to conclusions. As I was saying, you'd realize that the banks have closed for the day, and I do not encourage thieves by keeping such a large amount on my person. This is, uh... This is all that I have on hand. <clears throat> Thank you, Aunt March. It will be repaid, I promise. Oh. <laughs> you know, Margaret, surely that if you need more, you have only to wire. <laughs> That Hannah of yours, she's unpleasantly sullen, Margaret. You must speak to her sharply. Why, well, Hannah's more friend than servant, Aunt March. We've been unable to pay her with any regularity for more than a year now, yet she stays on. I wouldn't speak to her harshly or sharply for anything in the world. Oh, well, of course, if one has friends of that class, one must expect unpleasantness. Fifty dollars. But she said you could wire. Where did Joe go? Out. And a good thing, too. For a minute there, I thought she was going to fly in that march like a harpy. Oh, I came close to it myself. Funny old lady. I should have known I could count on her. We'd best get packing. Joe? Joe? Grandfather's best from Army's trip. I know your father doesn't approve of drink, but for medicinal purposes, it'll make us feel better anyway. You've made peace with your grandfather, haven't you? Oh, Laurie, I'm glad. Thanks to you, I gather. Give our love to your mother. It'll be all right, Joe. You'll see. Your father will be well in no time when she's with him. I know. Joe, uh, about money, we, we would like... Look at you. I knew you'd look like that. Stubborn. We're going to manage, Laurie. Really. But thank you. John's coming by. He wants to help, too. Oh, there you are, dear. Where did you get to? Marmy? You left too soon, Joe. Aunt March came through after all. What's this? From the Lawrences. How kind. Your father doesn't usually approve, but who knows what might help. Marmy, Aunt March came through? Not with very much, I'm afraid, but she did $25, offer... $25, Marmy. It'll help, too, won't it? 
Where are... Your hair! Your beautiful hair! My generous girl. The money will make all the difference. Mommy! What'd you do? Joe March, whatever ailed you to do such a thing? Your one beauty. It's been too much to care. Now I needn't think of it at all. Joe has done a fine thing. Don't look like that, Bethy. Christopher Columbus, it doesn't affect the fate of the nation. Here, Marmy. A keepsake. Your sister sold her hair to help me and your father. For money? But Aunt March said... Aunt March said a lot of things. This will more than pay for my ticket. Amy, run down to the station and get it for me, will you? Joe? I may never get to be a true heroine like you. Even if I thought of it, I never would have had the courage. Never. Lieutenant Brooke. I'm sorry I'm so late, but... Uh... Oh, come in, please. Any more news of your father? No. I've uh, been straightening up some business matters, and... Uh... Meg, I'm taking the dawn train to Washington. And it would be my honor if I could escort your mother. But, but you're, you're sick, Lee. You didn't say this afternoon you're going back tomorrow. Oh, Lieutenant, this is too much. We I was going to leave this week anyway. Please, Meg, let me do this for your parents. For you. I'll bring a carriage for your mother a uh, quarter to five. Thank you, John. Meg. I'll uh, write you about your mother and father. be all right. We must believe that. I'm not crying for Papa. It's my hair. <laughs> oh. oh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, I've been studying it since you, since you got home today. Your haircut, I mean. And uh, I think it was a very good barber. No, I mean it. And, you know, tomorrow, right after Mommy leaves, I'll wash it for you. I'll bet you anything that it curls and looks fine. Well, before you know it, you'll be setting a whole new style for Concord. I might even have my hair cut myself. Ming March, you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, the 
Thank you for trying. <laughs> we thought that first week Marmy was away to be the busiest of our lives, and our admiration for her mounted hourly. For it seemed to take all four of us to do what she had always seemed to accomplish alone with ease. We had heard nothing since the telegram from John Brooke announcing their safe arrival in Washington and we're most anxious for word of father. Thank goodness. Just in time, there's the drayman. I thought we'd never be done. We aren't. Beth has got to have some relief at the Hummel. She's wearing herself out over there. I'm coming! She got there. Oh. Oh. Marmy writes that uh, John Lieutenant Brooke has been wonderful. He found her hotel, and he's been coming to the hospital every spare moment he has. Oh, oh I've got to tell Hannah. It's the scarlet fever, so keep Amy away. Why didn't you tell us? We've had it, Joe and I both. We should have been going over there, not you. I didn't know until yesterday, until the doctor came, and by then... Oh, Amy, go get the doctor, Adams, quick. Joe, get her bed made up. Joe! The littlest one, it just sat in my arms. The one that Marmy helped on that Christmas day. Yes, that poor... Thank you, driver. Lori! Joe, you cut your hair. I like it. Isn't that Doc Adams' buggy? Is somebody sick? Beth is... Come on in. No, wait. Have you had the scarlet fever? Yeah, I think so. Yes, Beth has that. Amy could catch it. She's never had it. The doctor said she can't stay here, but the only place for her to go to is Aunt March. And Amy flatly refuses. Now, you can't exactly blame her. She could stay with us. She'll have to go do for Aunt March anyhow. I can't. And with Marvin gone, Meg and I won't leave Beth alone for a minute. At a time like this, Amy should give a thought to something else besides what she wants. Where is she? At the bridge, painting. Oh, Joe, be fair. If she can't help out here, where's the harm? Cheer up. Maybe I can talk her around. Oh, Lori, would you? Sure, right after I see Grandfather. Amy? 
Laurie, you're home. Oh, come be good to me. Everyone's at sixes and sevens and just being horrid. They won't let me nurse Beth as I'd like. And they want to banish me to old Aunt March. Oh, you're becoming very skillful, Amy. Oh, I'd like to believe so. But how can one be certain if, if one has only a little talent or great genius? That's what I'd like to know more than anything, that I have genius. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Amy, it's just... <laughs> who wouldn't like to know that? You too? Oh, Lori, of course, I'm dumb. With your music. And you'll have the chance to find it out, Amy, if you keep at it. I sometimes wonder if I'll ever have that chance. You know, Amy, you're going to have to go stay with Aunt March. Theodore, There's no point in arguing about it. You're just going to have to. That's all. You're coming down here to soft soap me because you think I'm going to think Joe I'm... and Meg and Hannah have too much to worry about without you getting sick, too. Yeah, and I'll have to dust and clean silver and look after that mean old lady. Me? Stop it. Now, you like to think you're not a little girl anymore, so don't act like one. Amy, look, my summer recess has started. I swear I will be a real St. George for you against that old dragon. I will come take you riding. We will go to matinees. Lori, really? Oh, Lori, if you really would, then I'd have a better time with Aunt March than I would if I stayed right here at home. Oh, I'll just go pack and you can take me right over. Beth sickened rapidly, and no matter what we tried, she seemed only to worsen. The doctor's constant warnings about her heart terrified us. How we longed for Marmy. <coughs> but her letter said that Papa was beginning to improve, and that her presence by his side made all the difference, she was sure. And so, we never mentioned Beth's illness in all our letters to her. The flowers are so beautiful, the flowers. Yes. But from our Mr. Lawrence, Bethy. He... He loves you so. <clears throat> birds are all flying away. No, they're not. It's summertime. And they're all outside your window right now. I heard. I know. But it will stop soon. I'm here. Your old Joe's here. She's going to take care of her mousy. Joe, Lori's downstairs. Joe, go down and visit for a while. You need a rest from this. She only rests when I'm here, you know that? Well, she's quiet now. I promise to call you. The moment she stirs, I promise. still surprises me every time I see you. What? Your hair. Oh, I hardly think about it at all anymore. Something I've always wanted to be able to do. Send for your mother, Joe. Joe, please. Oh, I never told you, did I? They printed my story. See? Came out the day Ben. I'm so scared, Lori. I'm so scared. What if... Oh, God, I can't bear to lose my Bethy. I'll be lost without her. She's everything good. And I'm not worth the air she breathes. Why isn't it me up there sick? Maybe dying. Beth wouldn't agree. And I don't either. Oh, Lord. Joe. 
Night, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But bless you for being here. here. Oh. Here. Thank you. See? I'm all right. No, no, you aren't. It's it's just too much for you to handle all by yourselves. Well, we must, that's all. It's as if by sending for Marmy, we'd be admitting there was no more hope. I can't do that, Laurie. Not yet. Not yet. Joe! She wants you, Joe. I'm sorry. Lori, how welcome you are. Aunt March, look who's come to visit. The hour is quite improper for receiving callers, Amy. But I'm not here to call, Miss March. I mean, uh, how do you do, Miss March? I've, I've just come to take Amy for a stroll. It's an ill-conceived notion, Master Lawrence. We've not finished our reading for the day. And the sandwich glass awaits polishing. Aunt March, please. <laughs> if you were your sister Josephine, your howls of protest would be heard clear to Concord Town Hall. You, on the other hand, know how to mind your manners. <laughs> Go stroll in if you must. But uh, don't dawdle. Remember, the glass will still be waiting. He stands 17 and a half hands high and has a strong head. He's really going to take some handling. Anyway, I have decided that you shall name him. You keep changing the subject every time I ask, so I know. Beth's no better, is she? I wish they'd let me in. I want so to see Bethy. Surely it's been long enough. I couldn't take the fever now. All they've left me to do is pray. It's where her best help lies, Amy. Let me see your new stallion some other time, Lori. Take me back to Aunt March now. I should have insisted you send for your mother some time ago. Well, send now, at once. But do you think she may not get here in time? Well, tonight should see the end of it, in one way or the other. Some sort of crisis is building, and with her heart, Call back later, huh? Laurie at home. Joe? Laurie? Laurie, will you telegraph Marmy for us? The doctor I says... I already have. I sent it this morning. I know it was interfering of me, Joe, but I, I just couldn't stand by and not do something for you. Now, there's no time for a reply, so I thought I would meet that 2 a.m. train just in case. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you, Laurie. If only it's not too late. You'd best fetch Amy home. Joe. Is Beth... She's much worse then? Oh. God can't be so cruel to just cut off that sweet child. He mustn't take Beth from us. No, sir. And if love has anything to do with it, yours, ours, his own, he won't. It's all right. We haven't lost her. Oh. Her fever's broken. Oh. She's sleeping. <laughs> remember. Yes, except for Papa isn't here. But we know he's practically well, because John, L Lieutenant Brooke writes us so. Yes, and when Papa does come back, everything will be just the same as it used to be. Who wants things to be the same? I can't wait for Papa's face when he sees what a lady I've become. Oh. Not like some I know. Look! Oh, new tunes for my piano. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, this one's I for me. You play it. Guess what I brought for Beth's birthday. again. Oh, it's so oh, good to have you. Cream, sugar, or lemon, Lieutenant? Meg, the name is John, as you well know. You also know that I take my tea plain. Don't be afraid, Meg. Oh, oh I'm not. I just feel... You're young, I know. Uh, your father's concerned about it, too. I can be patient. I've loved you for a very long while, Meg. And in time, I know you'll learn to feel as deeply as I. Learn to? I am a very good teacher, you know. You'll teach me, will you? John Brooke, you've never once asked me what I feel. Not once! And it might interest you to know that I've always been an excellent student if I choose to learn. But Meg... Meg... 
I meant nothing disrespectful, truly. Oh, Lord, you're so lovely. Don't play with me, Meg. I didn't think that of you. Then maybe you shouldn't think of me at all? Meg. Ah! Your father, Margaret. Where is he? I came to see him on a matter of importance. Your mother's not here either? Oh, yes, Aunt March. They're, they're both out in the garden. The garden? The garden? One should never leave young couples to their own devices. Your uh, father said he would leave that book for me on his desk. Uh, Margaret, I wish a moment with you. What is this mischief that I came upon? We were just talking, Aunt March, having tea. Tea? <laughs> Nonsense, you're blushing like a peony. Huh? Your mother told me that your parents had granted this rook cook. Brooke, Aunt March, John Brooke. Well, whatever. They've granted him permission to speak to you. <gasps> Madness, throwing you into the arms of a tutor. Then to leave you unchaperoned. You haven't gone and accepted him, have you? Because if so, you and he can be sure that you'll inherit not one penny from me. That's what he's after, you know. Money. He is not. And I shall marry whom I please, just as you may leave your money to whom you please. Your father's daughter. More's the pity. You try love in a poor man's cottage for a while and see how you'll be sorry. Not with John. Not ever with John. He is good and wise and willing to work hard, and he is kind. And I am proud to think that he cares for me. I've been poor ever since... Well, well, for almost as long as I can remember. And sometimes it has been hateful, yes. But as poor as we've been, this house has always been a happy one. And if I can make John's as happy for him, well... I love John, Aunt March. And if you hadn't barged in here just now the way you did, then he was about to tell me that he... You were, weren't you, John? <sighs> Fools, a lot of them. Leave us alone, Joe. Oh, Josephine, see what you've done. You, you. Interfering old busybody. You drove her to Don't her you use that tone to me, Josephine. Well, it's true. She'd never have said those things. Never thought of caring for him. But that is sufficient. I came here today to do you a favor. I warn you, girl, you're giving me second thoughts. Good. I don't want your favors. I'm sick and tired of your favors. And tired of having to be grateful to you when I've earned everything I've ever gotten from you anyway. Have you indeed? So be it then. You have just earned yourself this. My sister, your great aunt Carol, is planning a sojourn in Europe this coming year. She will need a, a traveling companion. I think that will be very much to Amy's liking, and she to Carol's. Don't you agree, Josephine? I shall repair to the garden and settle it with your parents. Aunt March, I'm sorry. <sighs> what have I done? What have I done? Oh, how many more times is this temper going to get me into trouble? And why does Meg have to go and fall in love? <laughs>